Hi, everyone. I hope everyone out there is staying safe and is well. Um, today, I want to talk about something completely unrelated to alcohol and my, my project. Um, but I want to talk about Black Lives Matter. Um, I think in the last month since the murder of George Floyd, which was a, a big wake-up call for a lot of, I think, would-be allies like myself who consider themselves allies but weren't really because we weren't really doing anything um, and have been kind of woken up to our complicity complicity, complicity, and everything. Um, but something that I've seen a lot on social media, which I think is very positive, is a lot of would-be allies like myself um, reflecting on their experiences and trying to step into the shoes of a black person in the United States and imagining what those experiences, those same experiences would have been like if, if we were black. Um, and I've been kind of in those reflections as well. Um, and I think my, my situation right now is, has, has kind of, yeah, generated a lot of thoughts within me. Um, so a little bit of background before, right, right now I'm currently in France. I'm in a city called Lyon. I've been here for um, eight months and I'm studying French. That's kind of the, the gist of what I'm doing. Um, before that, I was living in Colombia in South America for three years and I was teaching. So two completely different, very different cultures, very different experiences, right? In Colombia, I benefited each and every day from not only my American privilege, but also my white privilege and my Asian privilege, but especially my American privilege. Being an American, living in South America, um, just having an American passport, it comes with a lot of opportunities. It comes with, you know, people hold you in a high regard, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, coming to France, it's been a very, very different experience. And before I came here, you know, I heard a lot about kind of how foreigners are received in France, um, how people who are not, um, native speakers and fluent speakers of French are received and I heard a lot of bad things, I heard a lot of negative stories, but I was kind of like, you know, whatever, that's just what people say prefer not to, you know, make generalizations. So I came here trying to prove those things wrong because, you know, there's, there's, there's assholes everywhere, right? Um, and I came here and unfortunately, um, my experience in France for me personally has not been terribly positive with, in terms of relating to people. I'm not terribly strong in French. I'm not horrible, but I'm clearly not a native speaker. And yeah, I mean, I've experienced a lot of just general rudeness from, you know, um, waiters, people, you know, in stores, people on the street, kind of people in bars that I've met, um, and a general kind of disapproving nature, um, suspicion towards foreigners. I don't want to make that generalization, but I guess towards people who are... Um, not native speakers who are clearly not French and clearly not native speakers of the language, whether I'm being um, based off of the color of my skin because I'm not white. Um, I don't know, but that's just kind of been my experience. And I'm not going to lie. It's made me really, really, really upset <laughs> um, because honestly, it's the, f it's the first time in my life that I haven't been treated like that. I've been treated like kind of a second class citizen. Um, it could have to do with the fact that I, you know, I, um, f for example, um, like in grocery stores or in the mall, I've on several occasions, I have been, uh, have had somebody come and like check my bags because I think I'm shoplifting or something like that. So things that like never happened to me in the US. Um, the other day we were at the park and it was late. Um, we were just having like, like a little party and the people came up. Um, some people from the residence we're staying at came and they kicked us out. And they're extremely rude um, and basically treated us as if we were doing something, perhaps doing something incorrect or perhaps doing something criminal. And it's just, it's just like those, just kind of the way you're treated um, with a lack of respect um, and very different from kind of the, the emphasis on customer service and um, hospitality that we, we have in the U S at least for some people, um, which I had always experienced. So, 
I digress. Um, yeah, it's made me really upset. It's made me really upset. And it's been hard to um, tolerate that kind of stuff. And I've said on many occasions to my, like, my friends, if like the next person who is like rude to me in this country, like I'm going to go off, <laughs> right? Um, kind of being serious, kind of being not serious. But yeah, it's, it's, it's been extremely, extremely unpleasant. And yeah, I mean, like I said, my, my white privilege is not, my white privilege, privilege is not being recognized here. My Asian privilege is not being recognized here. My American privilege is certainly not being recognized here. And I need to stop crying about that clearly. Um, but in kind of reflecting on that, I've also been thinking about and imagining, you know, what would it be like to be in your country, not a different country, but your country and be treated as a second class citizen on a constant basis and not just treated as a second class citizen, but actually put in situations where your livelihood is being put in danger. Okay. And it's not just, it's not simply, I mean, it's not racism, systematic racism, systemic racism is not just one thing, right? Um, obviously the, 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 the murders at the hands of police, um, to, to black people that constantly is happening is horrifying and extremely serious, but it's also the, the, just the constant day-to-day interactions. And it's been really eye-opening to hear celebrities like famous athletes going on programs, talking about their experiences, getting pulled over by cops, um, having, you know, the cops, the cops called on them. There's stories out, there's tons of stories out there. There's a story of, I heard the other day of the base famous baseball player named Tori Hunter, who was like, basically, um, attacked in his own house after he called the police because they thought that he was robbing that he, they thought he was robbing his own house. There's so many stories like this. And it's my impression that if you ask, you know, black people around you about their experiences, it's not a case where it's like, Oh, you know, I know somebody who had this happen to them or had this happen to them. It's like, no, like in my experience, like pretty much everybody has a story. Everybody has a story of like, yes, I was, I was pulled over by and harassed by, by black people. Yes. I had like the cops calling me this one time. Um, and just thinking about like the anger that I'm feeling right now in France by just people being kind of rude to me basically and not treating me with like the respect that I've been treated with my pretty much my whole entire life. Um, up until this point, just because of, you know, the color of my skin and my nationality. If I was, if I was treated, you know, as a second class citizen in my own country and had my livelihood threatened on, on a constant basis, I cannot imagine the rage that I would feel. And that's kind of the point I'm trying to make here. Um, the rage that I would feel, I mean, I would be so angry that yes, I would be, I would probably be going out and trying to burn down Walmarts and trying to burn down targets. Okay. In, in protest, um, to be perfectly honest. Uh, and if that I've, I've, I'm having trouble, I'm still having trouble with people out there who are not getting that or who are not able to empathize in, in those ways, just the rage that people must feel right now. And it's, and it's palpable and it's, it's, it's serious. Um, and so with that said, um, this was a bit of a long winded explanation. I understand. Um, thank you. If you're still watching, thank you for, um, staying with me, but I just want to come out with my support for, for the, for black lives matter. And I'd also like to ask for more resources. I have been kind of um, still kind of looking for other resources. I'll, I'll leave a couple of things on this video, a couple of articles that I've read and a podcast that I'm currently listening to. But please, if you're out there and you have read either a really good book or something, please um, make a comment, leave it with me and please subscribe to my channel. And thank you so much for listening.